Hello everyone, welcome to the Geoecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos related to geography, environment and research methodology on my channel. In this series on economic geography, we have already learned about the agricultural inputs, productivity, agricultural typology and classification. So if you have not watched those videos before this video, do go there and watch it. This video is going to be focused around the food and nutrition problems related to the various aspects of world as well as we are going to incorporate the recent report on the hunger index where India was lagging behind several other countries which was in news. So that is also going to be part of this session. Before we go ahead, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and do share the videos with others as well. So now let's discuss about food and nutrition problems across the world and India. Now first important point here is that food security and food insecurity have been in news very commonly across the world and India as we have been seeing. And also our sustainable development goals are related to this problem, right? Remember zero hunger, zero poverty and several other things you can find out in sustainable development goals. So food and nutrition really becomes important part of today's world. Now remember in your school days also you must have learned about the balanced diet concept. What, why was it balanced? Because we had all the nutrition which was required for human body, right? So food and nutrition becomes really important. So food shortage is one problem. Food insecurity is one problem across the world that we are looking into alongside nutritional deficiency. If you have seen the pandemic talks and related to that, remember what has happened in pandemic, the immunodeficiency, right? The immunity issues, which is based on this idea of nutrition deficiency. So if you are not well nourished it means you'll have problems of the diseases around you the health issues right so the food and nutrition problem becomes one of the areas of the world which we need to be talked so undernourishment refers to the lack of enough calories to meet basic energy requirements in simple ways and remember the diseases like kwashiorkor marasmus beriberi which were part of our ncrt in school days right so this is what we learn here now looking into the food and nutrition problems across the world there are several problems which i have listed here look into the list food shortage that is simply related to availability right so first a is here food pricing right that is affordability so affordability is the next thing and then cultural practices where because of the certain cultures and food habits people don't consume enough protein so they may have deficiency population explosion productivity intensive farming then you have natural calamities like floods cyclones droughts famine related to these droughts and inaccessibility of food so there is the third a coming is access so three A concept you get here is availability, affordability and accessibility as the three pillars of this food insecurity or food shortage. But here we are talking about the nutritional issues as well, not just about the food. So let's understand that why was it in news recently? Now India has slipped to 101st position in global hunger index that is GHI in 2021 out of 116 countries from its 2020 position of 94th. So we have lost on some ranks here, right? Now understand, this is not just losing on ranks because ranks are dependent on several factors when we compute it. It means we are not doing good in some sectors. That is the basic connotation, right? So GHI is jointly published by whom? Concerned Worldwide and Wealth Hunger Life is this website where you can observe this. So these are the organizations which compute and publish it and first was in 2006 when it was published and since then it has been publishing and it is the, the 16th edition of GHI published here. Right. So what do you observe? They are talking about the global, regional and country levels of this hunger index and their measurements. Now what is important is that indicators used in this calculation where you can observe that how this is calculated. So what are the factors, criteria, where is the data coming from? So undernourishment is one factor, child wasting related to the height of the child and growth, right? Child stunting, then child mortality. These are the four major indicators which are taken into consideration while computing this index that is the global hunger index, right? Now look into the scoring and ranking. So based on the values of these four indicators GHI determines the hunger on 100 point scale right and 0 is the best possible score that is no hunger is there and 100 is the worst 
right so if this is related to the severity or you can say the extremity of the conditions or alarming conditions across the world that is why it is important now look into the data collection where it is done from so undernourishment data is provided by food and agriculture organization and child mortality data is coming from un interagency group for child mortality estimation un igme and child wasting and stunting data are coming from unicef world health organization and world bank right apart from the other sources as well so this is how this is being computed these are the criteria this is where the data is coming from and then it is processed to create this global hunger index now remember when we are saying indexing it means it is a mathematical tool right it is a quantitative tool it may not represent the actual quality or actual situation it may differ from reality in many factors but definitely it gives us awareness if you are not doing well at the same time more work has to be input if you are falling in the ranks more work has to be put in right that is the basic idea so you can say that it's not the absolute truth of the ground reality but definitely a very important indicator of the ground reality right so look into the trend for indicator values for india right so in 2006 12 and 21 right so generally what you observe the colors here the prevalence of stunting in general under five years this has significantly gone down right what about the other criteria the red one under five mortality rate now till this point it was gone down now again it started to pick up gradually that is where the worry is and proportion of undernourished children in the population if you observe they have gone down and prevalence of wasting in the children under five year is again going up so here is this concern in this particular graph if you observe so here we need to work on these criteria right these portions in indian context if we say right now result of this food and nutrition problems across the world what is the consequence if this continues what is happening that is important to know so child mortality is one thing right it refers to the mortality of children under five and this is one concern areas then child wasting as we know low weight as compared to the height and age so age weight height ratio is not well maintained that is one consequence then stunting as you know shortening of height and recently you must have also heard that height in india in the new generations is going down right so people are being stunted indian average height is going to reduce gradually that is going to be in part of many researches and studies right and undernourishment that is not enough nutrient available is also a problem and unhealthy people low life expectancy and this you can relate with what has happened in this pandemic in the covid situation how people have lost their life how they were not more immune to the disease and we have seen the situation right so unhealthy people is one important point to consider and then low production activity of human so if you are not having good nutrition you will not be able to work you will not be able to concentrate you will not be able to contribute to the national progress right so nutrition is not simply for the personal it makes the society it makes the country it makes the world phenomena of human lives and activities right that's why this become really important these six factors are great factors and distributed across the world to be considered improved significantly across the world right and as we know the world population is growing and by 2050 we are going to hit almost 10 billion people it means these criteria these indicators are going to be more significant it has to be taken into consideration right now if you want to reach that level where you benefit from the demographic dividend country like india which has a great youth potential we need to increase the efficiency of youth it means we need good food we need good nutrient health facilities right and also health consciousness health awareness that's very important along this particular topic so what do you observe geographical pattern of the food and nutrition across the world if you are looking here so what do you find fao food and agriculture organization has divided the world countries into three categories right now this is a world pattern that we're looking into through map you can look so low calories and low protein countries look into the south asian countries most of african countries so these are some of the areas in the world then medium calories and medium protein countries are east european countries russia south africa egypt portugal spain brazil and then high calories and high protein countries so you have mexico japan south korea israel brunei all these fall in the higher categories right so what you need to understand this is the world pattern on the basis of how nutrition is going to people right how much are they secure is it talking about nutrition security pattern on the world map that is important to learn here so 
further what you observe is this particular diagram of global hunger index in 2021 in context to India. Now let's look into this. What is it saying? It is saying three dimensions and four indicators. Now look into the three dimensions of it, three pillars of it. Three dimensions if you observe, inadequate food supply. It means availability, right? How many people are going to avail it? Then you have child mortality as the second pillar, right? So children below five years of age, their life expectancy and child under nutrition as a third pillar, right? So where are we lagging and what is the situation? So what you observe here that four indicators alongside this is undernourishment, under five mortality rate, then you have stunting and then wasting. So these are the four indicators which are important and three pillars. So this is the three, four approach. If you want to remember this, this circle here and further, you can pause the video and read about these measures. What is the situation which is given here? This report is available on internet. So you can download and read it in details if you want, right? So this is important in global hunger index, but for generalization, for basic information, you remember these four criteria or indicators and these three dimensions of the global hunger index composition. Now, what you observe further in the report will give you this clear idea. So now now let's look into this GHI score trend for India. What you observe here right now 27.5 is where the serious situation is there. And remember we were in alarming stages close to serious stages here before by 2000, 2006, 2012. Now gradually what we are doing is lowering on this number. And this is a graph where you have to lower further on your number to come into this zone, the green zone, right? It's the other way around. It means if you're falling in these computation, it means you're doing good in terms of food and nutrition, right? And if your rank is going up, it means there is alarming, right? So this is something where we are right now in the serious condition. And when there is something called serious condition, it means more work has to be put in to bring this from here to here in the next decade. Right. So this is where we are looking into the sustainable development goals of zero hunger, poverty and several others that we are looking into. Food and nutrition security is going around the world. Talks are being initiated. International talks are already going on in several arenas and we are doing so many things in India. So let's look into the government of India stand on GHI. What government of India has to say? So Ministry of Women and Child Development has criticized the report precisely claiming the methodology by FAO is unscientific. They are saying that this methodology is not exactly the true representation, right? It's not scientific in that manner. So according to government, the Global Hunger Index Report of 2021 and FAO report, that is the State of Food Security and Nutrition Report of the World 2021, has ignored certain facts. What are the facts? Remember, they have based their assessment on the results of four questions, right? In the opinion poll conducted telephonically by Gollup, then scientific measurement of undernourishment would require measurement of weight and height as well, which was not taken into consideration. The report completely disregards government's massive effort, right? These efforts like Pradhan Mantri, Garib Kalyan, Anna Yojana, Atmanirbhar Bharat schemes and several others have not been covered, right? It means it is not the foolproof indicator. Right. But definitely what we learn from this is that definitely the situation needs to be cured. The betterment has to be there. Right. So government of India has taken a stand saying that it has to be criticized. The report is not a foolproof report. Right. And some related initiatives by government of India, if you list here, Eat Right India Movement, Poshan Abhiyan, Pradhan Mantri, Matru Vandana Yojana. Then we have Food Fortification, National Food Security Act 2013, Mission Indra Dhanush, Integrated Child Development Services. All these schemes you can find on the government portal, right? And read in details. These schemes are running for the betterment, right? So the situation has to come down to a situation where we are secure in terms of nutrition or secure in terms of availability, affordability and accessibility to good food, not just food. Right. So quantity and quality has to be balanced in order to better the situation. That's important to understand. So now when in details we have discussed about the food and nutrition problems around the world related to hunger index and also other factors in the sessions to come, we'll be talking more on other aspects of economic geography. So stay tuned, stay safe, keep watching and learning and don't forget to share the videos with others as well.